Ferdinando Baldi in Richard Baudier's film opens with the prophet Samuel foretelling King Saul of Israel and his cousin Abner that a new king will soon come to rule over their empire. Portrayed by the renowned Orson Welles, the once fair and just King Saul is now mad with power since the Philistine captivity of the ark. Guided by the Lord, Samuel chooses David, the youngest son of a Bethlehem shepherd, and has him brought to the court of Saul. When David's righteousness and knowledge begin to attract a falling, particularly Saul's son and daughter, Jonathan and Michal, the evil Prime Minister Abner, played by Massimo Serrato, advises King Saul to send David to arrange a truce with the Philistines, with whom Israel has been involved in many years of battle with. David confronts King Azred of the Philistines, who, impressed by the confidence of the adolescent, agrees to a truce if David can slay the fearsome Philistine giant, Goliath. Armed only with a sling, David cleverly evades Goliath's multiple javelins, just before he strikes down his monstrous adversary with a flung stone and subsequently kills Goliath with his own sword. David returns in triumph to Israel, and in the film's penultimate scene, Abner attempts to strike down the young war hero. But shortly before, Saul intervenes and shoots Abner down with a lethal arrow and then, mindful of Samuel's prophecy, offers David the hand of Michal, his daughter. This astounding gesture by Saul ultimately signifies to the Israeli people their new king. David and Goliath, directed by Ferdinando Baldi and Richard Poitier, was released in the United States on the 28th of May, 1961. The film had a runtime just over an hour and a half of 95 minutes, and starred Orson Welles, the legendary actor and the film's headliner, as King Saul. He was accompanied by Yugoslavian Ivica Pahar, who played David, and the visually stunning Italian actress Eleonora Rossi Drago as Merab. Upon its release, the movie, whose filming locations ranged from Italy to Yugoslavia to Jerusalem itself, received mediocre reviews and very little international attention. Interestingly enough, the film's theatrical release in the United States was a whole 18 minutes shorter than the 113 minute version released in Italy. The film's production crew decided to cut 18 minutes of footage for reasons deemed unknown or top secret to the public. This, however, did not stop critics from commenting upon the length of the film, which received the reputation of having been stretched out in order to make the relatively short biblical story long enough for a feature film. Additionally, the film was criticized for not fully developing and getting into the heads of the main characters, who seemed underdeveloped and not fully explored. Even Orson Welles' depiction of King Saul, who has only a few brief scenes in the film, which the actor was in charge of directing himself, is not played to his legendary standard. In fact, it has even been commented that Wells looked embarrassed playing what, for his celebrated abilities, was a subpar role. All in all, the film did not make much of a splash, either domestically or abroad. Today, it has a 4.9 on IMDb and a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. Orson Welles was an American actor, director, writer, and producer who worked in theater, radio, and film. He's best remembered for his innovative work in all three categories. In theater, most notably Caesar, 1937, a Broadway adaptation of William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. In radio, the 1938 broadcast, The War of the Worlds, one of the most famous in the history of radio. And in film, Citizen Kane consistently ranked one as one of the all-time greatest films. Wells directed a number of high-profile stage productions for the Federal Theater Project in his early 20s, including an innovative ad adaptation of Macbeth with an entirely African-American cast, and the political musical The Cradle Will Rock. Orson played a big part of King Saul in the movie David and Goliath. 